entrepreneur, jet pilot, peak performance coach, and best-selling author brings you Living Outside the Cube, where great thinkers and doers of our century talk about how to help you be your best. Here is your host, Fabrizio Poli. And welcome back to another great episode of Living Outside the Cube. I've got Matt Ushley with me. He's the founder and president of the Ushley Institute, an internationally recognized consulting and research firm with such clients as American Express, Merrill Lynch, Wachovia, Morgan Stanley, Pioneer Investments. And he's a leading authority and much sought after speaker on how to attract, service and retain affluent clients and customers. Matt, welcome to the show. Ah, thank you. Great to be here. So, Matt, tell us a bit about how you started off and how you got into the um, the market of selling to the affluent. And just tell us a bit about the start of your career and how you got into this. Yeah, well, initially, you know, it's interesting. I was a, I was a counselor for emotionally disturbed boys outside of New York City. Uh-huh. So uh, then I become dealing with salespeople. You know, uh-huh. it's sort of yeah. a natural transition. I'm I say that tongue in cheek, but uh, I got an MBA in marketing, and uh, I was always able to speak in front of groups. And everybody always was talking about selling, sales, sales training. And I wanted to know what the, what the consumer was all about. Yeah. So I started researching what the consumer thought of sales and marketing. And then it dawned on me, well, might as well go to the affluent because they have all the money. Yeah. They're the ones who spend most money. So yeah. we just w- went up market on our research. Okay. And what, what we found out is fascinating. I mean, it, it's just what we discovered quickly is, is that there's not that much information that's granular on how to really market to the affluent, what you need to do to develop their loyalty, how they make decisions, and on and on. And so uh, we just kept year after year after year. I mean, we've been doing this for going on 20 years now, this type of research. Yeah. So tell us a bit about the mindset of these affluent. I mean, how do they think and why, what is it, how do they think different to the, 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 the common man on the street? You know, that, and that's a great question because they are a different species. Yeah. They're more educated, you know, they're more sophisticated. As a result, they're more skeptical and they're more cynical. You know, so for instance, just a few years ago, back in 2013, 2014, you know, not any, you know, let's say trust in advertising, the trust factor in advertising. You know, we have data points here in these sort of, we have, in, you know, our data. And banks were at 49%. Uh-huh. Now they're at 33%. Okay. Uh, financial advisory was at 44% back then. Now they're at 26%. Pharmaceuticals were at 44%. Trust factor in advertising. This is some to full trust. Now they're at 25%. All these Viagra ads, yeah. millennials are now making fun of them. Yeah. Um, automotive, 42% trust back just a couple of years ago. Yeah. Now it's down to 21. Mm-hmm. So what, what's happening is whether it's all the political rhetoric, all the craziness in the world, the affluent don't trust the media. Yeah. They don't trust marketing and advertising and how they make their major decisions is word of mouth. They talk. Yeah. Yeah. The people they trust. What's their opinion? Who should I use? Where should I get this? How do you like your car? Yeah. So, so we call it the, the word of mouth influence. Yeah. Okay. So, so if someone, for example, is marketing to these kind of people, you would say cold calling is not the thing to do. Oh, cold calling is not the thing to do at all. Yeah. At all. I mean, what you really need to do, you, you need to get out there and you have to become magnetic. You okay. got to become one of them. You got to be out there in their playing field. You got to rub shoulders with them. Yeah. You know, you have to be top of mind. Yeah. So what, what would be a good way then of becoming magnetic? Explain this whole, because it's very interesting, that part of your book, when, you, when, you, when you're talking about uh, this, this becoming magnetic. Yeah, we, we, you know, becoming magnetic means you're attracting business to you. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're in the travel business, for instance, if anybody's thinking of travel, you you know, you're the, you're the person who comes up immediately. If you're in the financial business, a financial advisory business, and anybody's talking about investments or, you you know, uh, main maintaining their lifestyle or anything to do with finances, your name comes up. If it's, you know, we do coaching, we coach affluent sales. So anybody who's thinking about, you know, coaching their sales force, our name comes up. Uh And you you do that by a, a number of factors. There's not just one, you know, part of it's content marketing. 
you know, so the book, I mean, you have a copy of the book I wrote in 2004, and we, re we rewrote this book yeah, right yeah. here in got, 2000, got you right? right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is the rewritten vision, I mean, yeah. uh, version. Wiley, my publisher, wanted a, a, a version, you know, post-crisis, post this great recession. And so you, you do the writing, you, you do videos, so what, little what video find, blurbs. Yeah, what's the difference then? That you found as you did the as you were doing the research for the 2014 edition compared to the one that was ten that was came out ten years ago. Uh, the, the, the biggest difference is well, there's a, there's a number of differences, but the you know the digital footprint now is so I I important, impactful. Yeah. yeah. You know, back in 20 uh, 2004, we're saying you know you got to get internet savvy. Now, yeah. I mean, your digital footprint is everything yeah. because everybody's. You know, Google search is what Kleenex is to tissue. Yeah. You know, so, I mean, there's an evolution of uh, technology, and now we're in the smartphone phase where everybody is Googling everything. So yeah. everybody has to be aware of their digital brand. That's, yeah. that's the biggest change. The other change is the level of skepticism in 2004. The affluent were always skeptical. Yeah. Now it's off the charts. Okay. I mean, they don't trust advertising. They don't, don't trust marketing campaigns. They don't trust politicians. They don't, don't trust the media. And so, word of mouth influence, although it was a big factor in 2004, now it's off the charts. Yeah, well, we found that with our aircraft sales business. I mean, we we did some advertising in 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 the in, in magazines where they talk about what well, well, where they've put aircraft for sale in, and we spent quite a bit of money yeah. on that. And we got not one email and not one phone call. Then we started doing some blogging, and I and as I and I was blogging on blog, and we got a little bit of traction. And then as soon as I changed the platform to LinkedIn, calls started coming in, deals started coming in. Yeah, yep, and yep. And so yeah, that, that the LinkedIn, and then another thing you could do in the airline business now. I mean, if if you're dealing with small luxury jets or small yeah, luxury yeah we do both. Airlines, we, we do airliners it, and also yeah. the luxury jets. Yeah, yeah, you know the luxury jets. Make events around that, sort of a, you know, a biannual or a twice a year, four times a year, an event where you're having hors d'oeuvres, you're having, you know, just cocktails and they can sit in your plane and it can be, you know, they can photos taken and, you know, you get the press there. You know, make, we call that affluent buzz, creating a buzz factor, making an event around a new, you know, a new model of uh, whatever it might be. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, um... So you, so what you're suggesting basically is to become magnetic, is to sort of really push yourself out there digitally. So social media, YouTube videos, all that kind of stuff, and sort of create that awareness it's, around yourself. It's, it's to push yourself out there digitally, but also do things, you know, that that really people start talking about, such as having fun events, social events that revolve around your area of expertise to a certain degree, yeah. but just that you are the man around town. You know, you're not always because because the affluent don't like people who are pushy. Yeah. You know, they like people who are, I mean, who are confident in what they do. You know, they have the gravitas, they have the presence, and they mix business with pleasure. Yeah. And, and by the way, you know, mixing business with pleasure now is another factor that's changed, and it's all about trust. Yeah. See, if you and I were to have a pint together and and get to know each other. We trust each other even more than we do right now in having a business conversation. Yeah. And what we have now is you know five years of metrics that say when a client or a customer has been social with their salesperson, they trust them and they rank them better on everything they do, and it accelerates the word of mouth influence. Yeah, that's very the interesting. Buzz. Yeah, that's that's very interesting. Because we, we noticed, for example, with the private jet scenario that um, a lot of people use it 60% of the time for business, 40% of the time for leisure. And, and, and there is a crossover there. Uh, it's the same with yachts. I mean, we, we, we deal with people that sell yachts as well because we, we send customers to them and they send to us. Um, and, yep. and same situation, the yacht, a lot of people see it as a, a recreational vehicle. But in reality, that recreational vehicle generates sales. Right. You're, you're exactly right. And, 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 you, and those things in, in themselves are interesting, they're magnetic, and not everybody might be buying a yacht or be buying a small jet, but they might want to lease a yacht or lease a jet or they know somebody that does. And so you create events around those and that helps your magnetism.
Yeah. So have you found that over the last 10, 15 years that your business has been on the increase? Because obviously, if you look at the, the charts, the number of high net worth individuals, ultra high net worth individuals is on the increase. So obviously, it's a market that's expanding. And so more and more companies will be selling to these people. And have you found that your, your business within this, this niche has been growing? Oh, absolutely. Our business has been growing. I mean, we have, you know, 25 coaches that help coach to this. We have inquiries daily that come in. And, it, and it's really because the industry, I mean, you know, the sales and, and has not been designed for marketing to the affluent. Yeah. You know, it's just basic sales. And shifting gears to go the luxury market, to people with money, people who are more sophisticated, you know, re just requires salespeople to raise their game. It's interesting, you know, when we look at socialization, we ask, how do you how do you determine? This is the affluent now. How do yeah. you determine somebody's successful? Yeah. And but by, by the way, nobody who's affluent wants to do business with somebody who they think is a failure, of course, or just average. Yeah. All right. And yeah. so we asked everything from the car you drive to the neighborhood you live in, to your office space, the clubs you belong to, all statistically insignificant. What, what's number one by far is your personal presence, your gravitas, yeah. your energy, who you are, followed very closely by your people skills, yeah. and then it's your personal grooming, yeah. how, you, how you dress. How, and so what this says is that you know, there's people with serious wealth that are driving hybrid cars, small little Priuses. Yes. There's people with wealth who, who you know, they, they might have a condo here, an apartment over there, and a house somewhere else in the world. But they're, they're gauging you by your presence, by your gravitas. Yeah, yeah. Also, a lot of these people, they tend to live in more than one house. Yes. That's what we found. So they yes. usually have, I mean, I, mean I, I used to fly private jets before selling them. And uh, I remember one boss I used to fly for, he had four houses. He had one in Switzerland, one in Paris, yeah, right. one in Florida, and one in Montana. Right, right. So, right. so, yeah. So we used to shuttle him from house to house. And he used to always travel with very little suitcases because he didn't need them because he had clothes in every single house. Yeah, yeah, there again, right. And yet when you were probably interacting, when he was interacting with people socially, he had that presence, didn't he? Yeah, he, he did, but he was the sort of person that you saw him on the street, you wouldn't think that this guy was a billionaire. But but he right. was, because he owned a number of aeroplanes, not just one, and, and yeah. So, exactly right. And he didn't, he didn't necessarily want people knowing he was a billionaire. Exactly, exactly, yeah. And he's one of these people. And I always say to, 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 to people, because people ask me, you know, because being in the space of selling private jets and that, that um, a lot of the clients that we deal with are people you've never heard of. Right. You're, you're exactly right. And what, you know, what's also interesting in our research is the majority, I mean, I, over 90% of the people that are being targeted, you know, with affluent marketing campaigns are self-made. Yes, and they're not all billionaires, you know, but they, you know, they have enough to be, you know, demographically labeled as wealthy or affluent, but they don't really perceive themselves as such. So, and they what, don't like being labeled that way. So what's the, the, the main challenge somebody has that somebody's used to, a normal sales guy suddenly finds himself having to sell to the affluent? It, what challenges do these people usually have? Is it the uh, having the big, to increase their sophistication? I mean, what, what is the, the, the big the, the biggest challenge for Brizio is between the ears. This is a mind game. Mind game. You know, that seven inch playing field between the ears because there's a big uh, social self consciousness. People get intimidated, you know, by people they think have more power, more education, more wealth. And so as a result, they could be good when they're dealing with the warehouse manager, but now they got to go up to the, you know, CEO's office on the 57th floor and they're shaking in their boots. You know, so there's that intimidation factor, which leads to call reluctance. Yes. You know, so, and, and when people get nervous, especially salespeople, they talk too much. And one of the worst things you can do is talk too much. Yeah. They have no gravitas. Yeah. They come across as kind of nervous, you know, hoping, you know, am I doing the right thing? And that's the biggest obstacle. Once they can get over this social self-consciousness and realize, that you know the affluent really respects somebody who's professional, knows their craft, knows what they're dealing with, can really serve them, can benefit them, and and as a hard worker, they respect that. Okay, in your book, you talk about the twelve commandments of selling to the affluent. 
Could you expand yes. on that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is so we, we sort of summarize it, you know. So the first commandment is you got to be totally committed. Mm -hmm. You can't be just hoping you make a sale, you know, you hope this, you sell a jet, hope this thing works. Mm -hmm. You got to be immersed in this. It's got to be, you got to love it. It's got to be a passion. And then, and then the second uh, commandment is you got to be as advertised. In other words, you, you've you got to be the real deal. Yeah, you can't you can't be there can be no, you know, smoke and mirrors at all because you'll be sniffed out and you'll be out of business. Yeah. And then the third commandment is you got to be a problem solver. And it's hard for people to imagine that wealthy people have problems, but they got problems. Yeah. You know, whether it's the delivery of the aircraft or when you're meeting with them or something to do with the funding or the money flow, it's just solving those problems. You're a problem solver. It's a big deal. And then. The fourth is you got to be a servant, and it's not that they want you to be their, you know, doobie, but you're there to serve them, to make that transaction, you know, absolutely fantastic, fantastic, to be a consultant for them, to be an educator for them, to be a helper. And then on top of that, the fifth is you got to be a trusted source of information. Mm -hmm. So, you know, instead of Google search and everything, you're just simply, hey, Matt, what do you think about this? Hey, Matt, what do you know about that? I mean, and you can rely on me because I'm not, I'm a knowledge worker. Yeah. And I'm not just a salesperson. I'm really an advisor. I'm a consultant, whether it's in airplanes or, you know, luxury travel or. Okay, so I was talking about providing value that exceeds price. Yeah. That means going beyond what's expected. Mm -hmm. You know, and so and that's a little, everybody has to interpret that their own way. You know, the 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 seventh commandment is full disclosure of fees, disclose all costs. Yeah. You know, even with people they got tons of money, but any hidden fees just they don't like it. Yeah. Yeah, you know, because it's a trust issue. Uh number eight is you stand by everything. You know, you just stand by everything. This is what we say it's going to do. This is what it does. If there's any anything an issue, we're going to take care of it. You know, Johnny on the spot. Mm -hmm. uh, number nine, you're the firm. You know, you might not be the aircraft. You not, might not be the cruise liner. You might not be the stock market, but you're it. And it's your credibility, and you need to perceive yourself that way as far as working in the affluent space. You know, you're that go-to person. Mm -hmm. Ten, you gotta, you got to absolutely covet your reputation. And this goes beyond just being a good guy around town. Mm -hmm. You know, your reputation now is digital. Yeah. In, in fact, we had, a, we had somebody talking to one of our coaches about getting a new brochure recently. Mm -hmm. And by the way... You know, and you know in your airplane business, brochures are brochures, but they're going to want to see and touch the plane and feel the plane and be there. Well, we, you know, we, they, just about, we don't do brochures because today yeah, everything's all digital. You, you, you shouldn't because the affluent, I mean, they don't respect brochures. But anyway, mm -hmm. this particular person was looking to get their firm another brochure. He's a key player. So we asked him or one of our coaches said, do a, do a Google search on yourself first. Okay. Well, lo and behold, he does a Google search. The first thing that comes up on him was when he was arrested in college for marijuana possession. Oops. So he said, so, uh-oh, there's your reputation. Yeah. And he thought it was kind of funny because it was 15 years ago. Yeah. But, you know, we advised him. We hooked him up with an online reputation company to get that off the first page of Google. Yeah. Because you don't want people sending that around for kicks and giggles. Hey, look at this! Look at look at this guy! You know, you know. Yeah. So you got to really be. And you, social media is just such a wide footprint now. Yeah. And then you know you, you, the 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 eleventh commandment is you got to become social media savvy. Yeah. So your reputation is directly. So you whether you hire somebody to do this or you figure it out on your own. But we advise salespeople all the time. First thing you need to do is Google search yourself. Second thing you want to do is Google search your company. Third thing you want to do is you want to Google search sort of your product, luxury airliners or financial yeah. advisory. And yeah. just, you got to get into this. You got to understand search engine optimization, et cetera, et cetera. And then the 12th commandment is eliminate hassles. I mean, the affluent hate hassles, and hassles are everywhere. Yeah. You know, I just got to, just before this podcast, I got a call from American Express, 
you know, because and I had to push all these buttons on my cell phone and they sent me a text because of fraud on my American Express card. Yeah. Well, it wasn't really fraud. It was my wife using my American Express card, okay. buying Starbucks cards for gifts. Okay. And, you know, so it was good on their part. They did that. They eliminated the hassle. My card wasn't, you know, wasn't yeah. basically shut down. But there's other cards that we have, business cards, where something like that would happen. I'd be traveling somewhere, pull out my card, and it was shut off. Yeah, that's that, that happened to me a couple of times. Right. So, and that's it. And, you know, it, and if you put that all in a blender, you know, you realize it all goes back to the first commandment. You got to be totally committed to the cause. Yeah. 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 The, 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 yeah you're right. I mean, the, the thing of shutting cards down because there's been a, a, an unusual transaction. We had one bank. Every time I traveled abroad they and they saw a transaction happen abroad, they'd shut the card down until you phoned them. Yeah. Right. Right. So, and so, so I then changed card. bank and, and, and this new bank, what they do is they send you a text message and then you just reply with a Y, meaning yes, and everything's fine. Right, right. So they eliminate the hassles. Exactly. And yeah. you, you're a much happier customer. Yeah, because because when, when they shut me down once, it took me an hour to get the car back on again. One oh, hour. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, I mean, fortunately, I wasn't, with a client, I wasn't with a client or anything. It was just out with the family. So we just sat there on the phone and, and, right. and got it solved. But I met I immediately envisioned me having lunch with a client and the card not working. I mean, that's not going to be good. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's hassle and embarrassment, and, and then all of a sudden, and that's what stimulates negative word of mouth because you'd be telling that story to everybody. Well, I'm telling you right now. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> I'm not giving the name of the would bank, be, but I mean, I'm, I'm telling you right now. But you'd be given the name of the bank if it, if it, if, it, if it embarrassed you that bad and in, in, yeah. in front you'd be telling me you don't want to do business with this bank yeah yeah you're right social media has changed the, the game for everybody it, it, it's it's everybody's footprint now is digital and we're just becoming you know sort of uh, aware of this a lot of a lot of wealthy people you know think that well you know I don't need a LinkedIn account or I don't need and I understand that because they think of privacy issues yeah. but what they don't realize people are gonna Google search them and they and everybody really needs to be be aware of their digital reputation, but especially affluent salespeople. Yeah, I get people say to me sometimes that the affluent don't really go online, or don't don't do social media. They don't do Facebook. They don't do Google Plus. They don't do LinkedIn. But I don't find that true. I think they do. Oh, I mean, we have data. They they definitely do, and they use it more than the general population. They're savvier with it. They have more toys to play with. Yeah. You know, they have multiple iPads. You know, they got computers all over the place. They have smartphones, so they're all over it. So the people who are saying that, you know, are, are just pr probably talking from their own bias. Yeah. They don't have empirical data. The empirical data says exactly the opposite. They are using Facebook. And why are they using Facebook? I mean, uh, because they want to see their grandkids. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah, know, so, they, so, you know, they're at their home in Montana and they want to, you know, share with their grandkids who are in Naples, Florida. I mean, it's. Yeah. yeah. So what, what platforms do you think they use the most? Uh, well, Facebook they use a lot. And, and not necessarily for business, but it's becoming more and more of a business vehicle. LinkedIn is the most professional one. Yeah, yeah, but, you know, you get a lot of retired people who, uh, you know, LinkedIn is as important to them. But then you're getting into Twitter. Yeah. And you're getting into Instagram. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's you almost, but I'd start with Facebook. Facebook is, Facebook and LinkedIn. I mean, they're the ones that we coach to. They're the ones we have major firms here in the U.S. that, you know, use us as their consultants to how to get their distribution force, you know, savvy using LinkedIn for selling and Facebook for selling. So it, 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 it's all about relationship management and relationship marketing. And as you well know, these are social media networks. So it's social yeah. and it's network. Yeah. And the digital format is just the medium. Yeah. And so people are on that to network, to socialize, but you got to be careful how you use it. Yeah. So so would you not suggest to try and pitch 
one of these people through social media. You 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 have no, to. No, no, you don't want to. You don't want to pitch them through social media. You want to become magnetic through social media. So, for instance, you will. You know, you'll have a little video on the three things you can consider when looking at a new private jet. Mm -hmm, you know, yeah. the three new, you know, and A, B, and C. Or yeah. if I'm a financial planner, the three things you should really be aware of when you're thinking of putting a, a financial plan. So it's a little bit of, it's content. We call it yeah. content marketing. Yeah. And it's one or two minutes long. It's entertaining, but it's informational, and it's a video, and it's, it's online. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, Matt, it's been very insightful talking to you. Um, so you've come up with a new edition of your book just recently. Have you got any any other books in the making? Uh, we yeah, we we have a book on LinkedIn. Okay, you know the link the indispensable LinkedIn sales guide. Yeah, you know, and that's specifically for financial people, for financial advisors, mm -hmm. and and that was the last one I've written. So. You know, I haven't had, you know, right now we're just writing our white papers on our most recent data on millennials yeah. and on the digital footprint. Okay, so, that's interesting. So if somebody wants to get hold of you, which, which is the, uh, or buy your books or, or engage your services, where would be the best place to go online? Uh, go, to, go to our website, www.oechsli.com. Yeah, as, as written behind our you. Our basic yeah. website. Yep. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, let's keep talking. Thank yep. you, Matt. Thank My you. pleasure. I enjoyed it.